Hi, my name is Pilan Litanda Nintlofu and welcome to my presentation on how to write an academic paper. I'm sure you are watching this video because you want to learn how to write an academic paper. Whatever your reasons are, uh, feel free to write to me at eclassvirtual.gmail.com and give me uh, details of yourself as well as explain to me why you want to learn how to write an academic paper and if you need any assistance on anything feel free to to write to me remember to click subscribe as well as to click the likes on this video and now let's just go on to the main uh, body of the day now uh, in writing an, uh, an academic paper there are quite a number of things that you need to remember first and foremost you must remember that an academic paper is just like any other paper which consists of uh, the body uh, rather the introduction the body and the conclusion those are the three main elements of an academic body so let me take it again it's the introduction it's the body as well as the conclusion now what does the introduction uh, seek to do what function does it play well, there are three important functions that uh, the, the, the conclusion, uh, the, that the introduction plays. Number one, the introduction uh, serves to create a context. It contextualizes uh, the, 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 the paper that you're writing, giving a background information to, to the paper. And uh, secondly, it gives or outlines the structure of the academic paper and then thirdly it uh, unveils the critical or the main argument or thesis of the academic paper so that's what the introduction does contextualizes the the, 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 the discussion it outlines the structure of the paper and then it unveils the main argument or the thesis of the paper that you are writing and then after uh, writing the the the, uh, the introduction the next item is the the body of uh, the essay or the academic paper whereby you go on to um, discuss the main issues uh, looking at uh, the points that support or that prove or disprove the thesis or the 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 main proposition that your paper is carrying and then lastly you have the co the conclusion which also has its own elements uh, now it's time for us to go to the next phase and look at how the uh, the introduction is structured um, the elements of the introduction are as follows it introduces the subject through creating a context setting the scene for the subject and the topic under discussion it pro it describes the structure of the essay and lays the foundation for the central argument or the thesis of uh, the paper now the introduction as we have said must achieve uh, these goals that it sets to achieve and the question is how does it do so first of all let's look at creating the context or setting the scene uh, it, it could be done by way of using a famous or pertinent quote on the subject under discussion for instance you might be discussing a certain topic and you find that uh, there is a quotation or uh, from a, a, maybe a, a highly uh, esteemed authority in that uh, field who has made a, a statement or which is co often quoted maybe to illustrate the, the main issues uh, relevant for that subject or you could tell a relevant story a story that will highlight the main issues under discussion or you could go on to lay a foundation based on the historical accounts or background of uh, information or you could even share relevant statistics, facts, or other hard data to illustrate the state of affairs. Now, in contextualizing the discussion, you can explain key terms uh, and definitions. And you can also use rhetorical or critical questions 
on the uh, main issues pertinent to the topic. That is as a way of, uh, you know, laying a foundation and creating the context within which the academic paper is going to tackle its main issues. Now it goes on to outline the structure of the paper, that is to set out the roadmap for the reader, introducing the main points to be discussed in support of the central argument, and then giving hints on how the author plans to support the thesis through the uh, points, as well as using the verbs that is actually done and achieved through the use of verbs such as I'm going to describe, I'm going to analyze, or the essay, the essay is going to prove, it's going to distinguish, it's going to argue, it's going to demonstrate, it's going to illustrate, or it's going to provide explanations for the following. Then you, you that's, those are the key words that must uh, be used in outlining the structure of, of the paper. Lastly, within the context of uh, uh, the, uh, what you call the introduction, we are saying it lays the foundation for the central argument or thesis of the paper, or we say. Now, it's, it, the thesis of the central argument must be made immediately as clearly as possible. That is, you must present your, your central argument or your pro main proposition, which is presented either as a question or a hypothesis to be explored in the main body of the paper. Now, it must be an arguable proposition for which a straightforward answer cannot be obtained, or one for which a simple yes or no answer will not suffice. Because you see, it is a thesis in the sense that, uh, you know, it creates or it presents opportunities for debate. Uh, hence, we are saying it is an arguable proposition. So you must make that thesis statement, you must lay it and reveal it to your reader as early as possible so that the reader knows exactly what you are talking about in your academic paper. Now let us look at the body of uh, the essay. We are saying that uh, the body follows the structure outlined in the introduction. It discusses the topics pertinent to, provo to proving the paper's thesis. It submits and explains the evidence to prove or disprove the central proposition of the thesis. And then it explains the arguments and the counter arguments regarding the thesis of the paper. So that is the main function of the body. I take it again. It must conform to the structure as outlined in the introduction. It must discuss the topics pertinent to proving the paper, I mean, to proving the thesis of the paper. And that is done through the submission and explanation of evidence. So you are going to be giving evidence, uh, providing evidence for whatever claim or proposition you make uh, within a, or during your, your writing. And you are going to examine the arguments and the counter arguments. Remember, for any statement that you make that tends to be a, a, a counter uh, statement or a counter argument. So your, your, your body must tackle those issues. Now, the paragraphs, you see the body is divided into paragraphs. Each paragraph contains one main idea. And uh, most of the time you find, in fact, in all instances, your, your paragraph must uh, follow a hamburger approach or layered format, whereby uh, they are following uh, features uh, for the paragraph. You have a topic sentence, you have the explanatory sentences, and then you have analysis sentences, and you have examples as well as in illustrations, and then you have a concluding statement for your paragraph. Uh, the other issue or the other thing that uh, the main uh, body, uh, I mean that the conclusion does, is to review the main body 
or the main points that are carried or captured in the body. So it recaps and reviews the main points captured by the various paragraphs, particularly through its uh, through the various uh, topic sentences. Now, let us look at uh, what uh, the analysis statement does. It links the points canvassed in the current paragraph with the main thesis of, of the paper. So in other words, every paragraph that you write must always uh, look back to, to, to the main thesis statement or to the main, uh, you know, the central argument of uh, uh, the, the essay, whatever you write, particularly in terms of each paragraph, must always be linked with the, the with the thesis statement, so that the write, the reader does not lose sight of exactly what it is that you are talking about and why you are sharing the ideas in this current paragraph. So the idea of having to link back with the uh, original and the important thesis statement is very very important don't lose sight of that now what are the elements of the conclusion it restates the central argument uh, of, of the paper in a new way it recaps and reviews the paper's central topics and main points and then it explains the significance and relevance of the paper in the broader academic conversation. Now let's look at each one of these items in turn. Now in terms of restating the thesis statement, you find that the conclusion uh, must uh, emphasize the thesis statement and remind the reader of what the whole article has been about. And it uses different words and construction so as to enable clarity and give more illustration to reader to the reader about the thesis statement or the central argument or the main proposition of the paper or the essay. Now we are saying it must not depart from the original intention or the central argument of, of the paper. So in restating the thesis statement, uh, the, the conclusion must maintain the gist and the spirit of uh, the, the main thesis statement or the central argument. It must not deviate, though stating it in different terms, just for purposes of clarity and, you know, giving it more life. Uh, the other issue or the other thing that uh, 
the main uh, body, uh, I mean that the conclusion does, is to review the main body or the main points that are carried or captured in the body. So it recaps and reviews the main points captured by the uh, various paragraphs, particularly through its, uh, through the various uh, topic sentences. That is very important uh, to, to, to do that. Now, last but not least, um, the conclusion must highlight the significance of the paper and then it must make a call to action. In other words, the author must state the main reason for the paper. He must state some of the reasons uh, which tend to, which usually include uh, informing, convincing, or exploring. So some of the main reasons or purposes for a paper may be to inform, to convince, or to expl explore. Then the paragraph must explain how the paper proves the central argument of this essay. And uh, it must also outline and explain the paper's relevance or significance, as well as its contribution to the broader academic conversation. Now, uh, with this, we come to the May to, to the end of our discussion, and just to remind you that uh, the 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 an academic paper consists of an introduction, of a body, and of a conclusion. Of course, don't forget that uh, the structure is not necessarily more important than the content. So, in uh, writing any academic paper, you will have to do your research thoroughly, uh, get your facts right, and then when you have your content ready, you will be then able to produce a well-structured uh, academic paper. So don't forget that this particular paper is only dealt with, I mean, this particular video is only dealt with uh, the structure of the academic paper and the technicalities of producing it. But when it comes to issues such as uh, finding the relevant information and the bolster, um, material with which to bolster your argument, that must be done through research. Uh, that will uh, then, which will then contribute much to, to the knowledge that you require in order to make a success of the writing. Thank you very much for taking your time to participate in this video presentation. Feel free to write to me at, uh, at iclass at gmail.com. My name is Pilani in love once more. Uh, I would, uh, I would, it would be of interest for me to get your feedback on how this video has helped you. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day.